Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with Casey. Today, we're going to talk about a few things. We're going to go over the market conditions. I'm going to give you the five things you need to uh, ask a realtor. You know, anyone can sell your house right now, um, you know, with only, you know, 10% active inventory out there. Yes, anybody's going to sell your house, but there's $100,000 at stake. So the difference between having the right realtor and the wrong realtor, about $100,000. Normally, it's the difference between selling your house and not selling your house. Now it's just a function of how much money are you going to make or lose, you know, with the right or the wrong realtor. So we're also going to talk about assessments. Assessments came out this morning. They're hitting everybody's mailbox. Your assessment's up 15%. Um, you know, what does that mean? Um, you know, quickly, uh, I think they hit it right on the head. Um, you know, I've been saying that for a while. So normally, you know, does that affect the value of your house? The answer is no, it doesn't. Buyers, demand, supply, that's what affects the value of your house. The assessment is merely an indicator that helps us price homes, okay? So let's say we go out in a, a one mile radius of your house, similar age, similar size homes, and all of them are selling between 105 and 125% of assessment and the average is 115. Well. 115 of your assessment would then be a customary number to start with, right? So we take a look at that. Now we also look at other things. We look at price per square foot when we're coming up with a customary value. So at that point, when you're comparing apples to apples, okay, everybody's in their 2021 assessment. It's about 115%. Um, that's customary. Now, is the house upgraded? Does it have a lot of premium? Does it have a lot of discount? Are we around traffic? You know, all those things need to be, you know, have, have the, what kind of paint do we have? Are we have yellow paint? Do we have old? Are we dated? Are we updated? What are we? So, but it all starts with a customary value, right? Customary value is a percentage of the assessment, a combination of the percentage of assessment and the price per square foot, okay? So all that means is for me, and Kevin and people are doing the pricing. It just means that if we're gonna compare a house to try and price a house, we have to use either all 2021 assessments or all the houses have to have 2022 assessments. So it's a, for 30 day period, it's a, little, it's a little tough on how we do it, but that's our problem, not yours. So um, the housing values have gone up 25%. Uh, last year, assess your assessment went up 5%. So they're just playing catch up right now. So I think that they're right on the number, if not a little low, they should be a little higher than that. Um, so the homes appreciated 25%. Your assessment over the last two years has gone up about 20%. So that's about right. I mean, normally, historically, we're at about 108 to 110% of assessment. That is a customary value. Right now we're up in the 128%, 130%. So we're up in a very high land right now, okay? So let's let's take a look at the market conditions and see where we are. And uh, if you have any questions on your assessment, um, you know, let me know. It is not, it doesn't mean that if your house is priced at 850, you switch that just because the assessment went up. Um, we're all, we're all comparing apples to apples here. Um, assessments do not increase values. They just help us when we're pricing houses. Okay, so let me share my screen. Let's go up to our, um, let's go up and take, uh, take a look at the market conditions. Okay, so the three things we're gonna talk about today, market conditions, the five questions you wanna ask your realtor and the 15% tax increase, which I just, just uh, took care of. Here's your inventory. I wonder why Morgan's calling me during my coffee with Casey. Hi, Morgan. Hi. How are you? Sounds like I got a sicky on my hands. Hey, I'll call you right back. I'm doing coffee with Casey. All right, goodbye. So as you can tell, all of my agents that work for me really lock and load on the on Facebook Live at 11 o'clock to hear what we have to say. <laughs> Sounds like she's a little under the weather today. All right, so let's look at the February inventory. From January 1 to February 25th, you take the five-year average of how many homes were um, put on the market. How many new listings we had? In Vienna, for the five-year average, if you take today's from January 1 to, to February 25th and compare that to the five-year average, 
our inventory is down 33%. So our inventory is not going anywhere right now. Um, we will keep an eye on it. Things happen, things change. We have a lot of homes that are coming on the market. So we'll, you know, I feel like I'm the guy that's uh, sitting on the Titanic looking for an iceberg. And as soon as I see the iceberg, I'm gonna yell iceberg. So when I'm doing coffee with Casey, I'm, I'm sitting on the deck looking for the iceberg. I'm looking for that big inventory to come. I'm looking for, um, you know, inventories to, or, um, uh, available and, and under contract houses. I'm, you know, keeping an eye on all of that to make sure that we don't get caught off guard like we did in 2015. So Fairfax County, inventory is down 16% through January, uh, February the 25th. Arlington County, it's down, what is that, 11%. Um, Prince William County down 13, Loudoun County down 14. So let's call it, we're down about 15% across the board for our inventory and Vienna's getting crushed at twice that amount by not getting their houses on the market. So, so you know, if, what does that do? Well, it pushes prices up. So, you know, if people are considering being sellers in Vienna, now's a perfect time. In fact, when I sit with sellers, I'm pushing them to do it as quick as we possibly can, prudently, but quickly, um, get it on the market before the inventory comes up. When you're down 33%, that means you're the only bell of the ball. So, uh, do we overprice houses? No, we do not overprice houses. We just make sure that we let them bid it out, bid it out, bid it out, and get it up. So, you know, right now we're currently getting $150,000, $225,000 over market value. So, anyways, that's pretty good. All right, so let's take a look around. You know, that I uh, look at all the, the towns to see um, what percentage of the homes are under contract. That dictates whether we're still in a seller's market or not. A lot of times we're somewhere between 40 and 60% um, of the homes are on the market. But as we look around, Arlington, massive seller's market at 76%. McLean, just barely holding on. So the, um, the last week numbers are in blue and the this week numbers are in green. So <clears throat> you can see that, you know, Arlington is about the same. Um, this week, McLean is up a little bit. McLean, uh, Vienna is up a little bit. We've gone from 73 to 79%. Again, 79% is an extraordinary number. And it just shows, you know, we just sort of lacking inventory. Um, in Oakton, last week, we were at 80% were under contract. This week, we're under at 63% are under contract. Um, last week, we were at 87% under contract in Oak Hill. Now that's gone to 76 Again, new inventory coming on the market in some of these in some of these markets. Centerville last week, 100%. This week, 83%. Why? New homes are coming on the market. They may or may not have just had time to get under contract yet. Um, last week, Ashburn was at 87%. Now they're at 80%. Okay. Again, more listings coming on the market. Haymarket. Last week, remember, remember Haymarket was at 100%. And then all of a sudden last week they went to 58%. I was like, what the heck happened? So we looked at Ashburn. I mean, at um, Haymarket, they had 12 homes come on the market and they had seven or eight homes that were coming soon. So as fast as those homes were coming on the market, they were going under contract. Uh, Billy was going to compete for one of the houses. And, um, and I said, well, it's not worth 925. I mean, you know, you might be able to offer 950. Um, and they got a million, 50 or a million ones. I think it was probably a million one. Um, now, understand this. Ashburn, Haymarket, Gainesville, those homes were underwater for years. So the prices ran up in 2006, 2007. They literally, um, on Linton Hall, I'm telling you, they were down 40%. The values went down 40%. The sellers were underwater for years and years and years. So um, pretty, pretty volatile. And then it stayed low for a long time. And now it's having a real big boost. So the question is, are the, is $1.1 million going to stand? Or is that just an artificially high price? Um, you know, I, I'm, I'm 64. I don't take any more risks. So, you know, I don't know. that. I think that number's too high. I just assume tell my buyers, let's wait until June and July and August 
when a lot of inventory is out and all the buyers go to the beach, then let's go ahead and make our move. So let's look at Leesburg. Leesburg last week was 78%, now they're 81%. So that's, these are massive seller's markets here, guys. Percyville went from 76, 75, no real change. So if I'm looking at a barometer of market conditions and we are massively strong in um, seller's markets, the inventory, which could change, which could change. The inventory is still low and, uh, and that's what's pushing all these up and all the prices up, okay? When the values go up, your assessment goes up. Today was evidence of that. 15% increase, it's right in line with where it should be. Last year, they only did it 5%. I told them they were way off on that. This year, they corrected and did 15%, which is about right, okay? So I wouldn't have any heartburn about any of the assessments. Let's talk about, you know, in this market. Oh, well, here's some evidence. You want some evidence of the buyer pool right now? So before I launch a listing, okay, here's my listings that I would have had. Coming soon, actives, pendings, right? These are under contracts. So what I look at is I'm looking here at how what's my buyer pool for each one of these houses. So I want you to look at some of these numbers. 87, there's 250, 125. Basically, other than a few anomalies, a lot of them are in the 100s, 200s, okay? And the favorites, which tell me people, these are active people looking in this area, in this neighborhood, that are clicking through and saying, this is my favorite. This tells me whether how many contracts I'm going to have. So all of this is happening during coming soon, this period right here. And I have to tell the seller, should we launch at that number or do I think the buyer pool is too small and we don't have enough favorites, which is exactly what happened. So this protects my sellers that I know that we're safe to launch here and not safe to launch here, right? But what I'm really trying to show you is look at today's numbers. This is fresh. This is only a couple days old. $1.85 million house, 334 people in the buyer pool. Look at the buyer pools, right? So look at these buyer pools, 800, 600, you know. Um, there's a couple small ones here, but these are, these are under contracts. They go down a little bit. But I mean, look at the buyer pools. Look at the favorites. I mean, this house uh, on more... Uh, was launched on Thursday and has four contracts. It's probably going to get eight, eight to 10 contracts. This one on Grassy, uh, Gra uh, Grassy Hill, this had 20 contracts. Pebblebrook had a lot of contracts that came in. So, so I know that when I have you know, 23 people that love a house, I'm getting five to seven contracts. And it's going to go up. That one went up maybe 125,000. Uh, Pebblebrook's maybe... A, uh, final uh, contract was maybe, I think it was maybe 100, 125 over. Grassy was about 60,000 over and more, I'm anticipating more will be at least $200,000 over list price on its final sales price. So my point is, look at the massive number of buyer pools that we have and this as opposed to what it used to look like. That's a normal market that's today's market. So, and you wonder why I'm telling sellers it's time to get them on the market right now. So when you go on the market, let's talk about this, right? So anybody can sell your house. People, sellers shouldn't be worried about selling their house that's going to sell, okay? But there's five things you need to ask a realtor to save $100,000 because it is not selling it that's the question. That usually was the question. Can I sell it or is it gonna withdraw? 40% of the market usually withdraws, 60% usually sells. But in today's market, they're all going to sell. It's just a question of how much money are you going to get out of this? So here's five questions you need to ask for real. Remember this. This is a business transaction. We're not buddies. We're not friends. We're not family. We're not, you know, going out to have coffee together. It's a business transaction. You need to ask tough questions and, and, you may have parents in New York or North Carolina or wherever they are, friends, family, business associates that are trying to sell a house. They need to know the five things to ask when they're talking to a realtor. The first thing is, what's your commission structure? What exactly is your structure? You know, right now, it normally goes somewhere from 4.5% to 6%. 4.5%, 2% goes to the listing agent, 25 goes to the selling agent. 
all the way up to 6%, where some of them are keeping 3.5% and giving the buyer agent 2.5%. So that's a big deal. So just explain really quickly is in real estate, a realtor, an agent who's going to sell your house has to work for a company. And that company requires a percentage of your income, whether it's because they have a big name or whether you have a multi-level marketing deal, we got to pay in to other people that brought you in, or you received a massive bonus to come work for that company, like a compass. And then you have to pay back money to the company to pay back your loan. But in any case, paying money to a broker is a waste of money. It's just a waste of money. It's throwing money down the drain that you need to use for valuable tools, okay? So, um, so Samson Properties, they don't charge their agents anything. If you're a top producer, you get 100%, goes right to selling the listing. Listing agent, assistant listing agent, and selling that property. So, you know, 6%, let's say a million dollar house, you're throwing away 15,000 bucks, okay? All right, how do you prepare the home? So this is, a lot of agents are so excited to get a listing, they don't pay attention to telling the sellers and having a hard conversation of, I'm sorry, but that wall's gray, this wall's yellow and that wall's tan. They have to be consistent when they walk in. You have to look correctly. Your lighting fixtures are dated. You need to swap those out. It's not hard, it's not expensive, but you need to do it. You need to prepare the home for the 2021 buyer. And there's so much money at stake, so much money at stake that the difference between doing it right and wrong, as I'll show you in a few minutes, is about 120,000 bucks, okay? So, so let's focus on uh, one of the question is, how do you prepare my house? And our answer is, we only work on cosmetic items, no capital improvements. Cosmetic items pay $7 for every dollar invested. Capital improvements, if you put in 20, you're only getting back 10. So we don't do capital improvements. So we only work on the cosmetics. We have a 30 something, giving advice on what we're going to do to make it look good for a 30 something who are our buyers, okay? So, so I don't care if, if we hurt feelings, we don't hurt feelings, we just come in and tell them how it is. This is what today's buyers are looking for. They don't want traditional, they want transitional. Now, one seller heard me talking about this and thought I was just gonna trash their house because it had that you know, tan paint off. Look great, it looks fantastic. So, so really when we come in, we really have to look at it to determine just little things to pull out of a house to turn it into a transitional look. Um, I don't like to spend money. I don't like massive work. Um, you know, that's not what we're trying to do, but you really need to prepare the house. And for somebody to say, oh no, this looks good to me. A listing, I will tell you, a listing just went off with yellow walls. Well, the difference between yellow walls and, and um, uh, Revere Pewter is, you know, $25,000, $35,000, and it only costs $4,000 to paint or $3,000 to paint. So um, it's wrong to not prepare a house for today's sellers. So what's the pricing strategy? So for most people, um, they go on a computer and the computer tells them what the house is worth. They take that number and say, here's what we want to list it at. Um, and they'll, they'll have a 26 page report validating that. Well, those numbers are wrong. I mean, every day, when I'm pricing a home, I'll look at all the pricing models. They're all over the place. Some of them are $100,000, $150,000 off from each other. So they need to price a home based on their experience and their own model that they've developed. What is the average price per square foot? Adjust it for size and age. What is the average percentage of assessment? How do those things work together? What is a customary value? What is a updated value? What is a renovated value? What is a dated value? So a realtor has to be an expert on pricing. So what is your pricing strategy that starts with what's the value of my house? How good are you at figuring that out? Okay. Now the pricing strategy then goes to once we know that it's a customary value, let's say I'm updated and let's say it's 1.32 is a customary value and 1.35 is an updated value, right? Well, the buyer pool under 1.3 is four times bigger than the buyer pool over 1.3. So if you kept it at 1.3, you're gonna get bids to 1.45, it's $150,000.
if somebody says, well, let's go at 1.35 or 1.4, then it sits and they wait and then boom, 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 starts to backfill. I'm going to show you evidence of that in a few minutes. Okay. So trust me, the strategy should be, okay, here's what the customary value is. List it at the customary value. And if you're close enough to a major threshold, dip under the threshold that triples or quadruples your buyer pool. <clears throat> That's a strategy. Let them bid, okay? What is your marketing plan, right? There's four things that you have to do. You have to, you know, I don't want to talk about your company and how great your company is. Your company is not going to help a seller. So if somebody's talking to you about their company, they're wasting your time, okay? You want to know what is your marketing plan? How are you going to reach the realtors with stored searches, the neighbors, the renters, and the people that are outside of your area. There should be a four-prong approach, okay? And I'll tell you what, so the people have stored searches, that's just fine. You know, that's a, that's a good solid place to start. The renters that are in the school district, that's another great place to be, right? Yeah. So what's your strategy for getting to those people, right? You wanna have the neighbors. I know people don't like having nosy neighbors. They call them nosy neighbors. Look, your neighbors are your friends. Your neighbors are your advocates. They're the ones that love the neighborhood the most and know all the benefits of it. They have family, they have friends, they have business associates that they're trying to get into that area. So do we let the neighbors know? You bet your tail we let them know. We send them out brochures. So then, you know, the last thing is the buyers that are not looking in your area. And this is the key. So we'll have, let's say three houses on the market last weekend. And we had, let's, let's say it was 25 or 30 contracts that came in. From where? Where did they come in from? Where are the buyers coming in from? Where are the biggest deals coming in? Where are the biggest numbers? Where's the biggest bids coming in from? See, we need to know that because the next three houses we're gonna put on the market have to learn from the last three markets. And we need it on every weekend because I need to still know, are these West Coast buyers? Are these DC buyers? Are these Arlington buyers? Are these Alexandria buyers? Where the heck are they coming from? Well. If people that are coming locally looking um, are bidding in the, let's just pick a number, 850 range, and I've got Arlington bidding in the 925 to 950 range, see, a person in Arlington looks at the house and goes, this is the cheapest thing I've ever seen. I'll bid 950 because I can now telecommute and I can live in this house as opposed to that house in Arlington and I can bid 950. So where are my highest prices coming from? Okay. It's coming from feeder areas that are more expensive than we are. How, what's your plan? How are you getting them in here? I can tell you that's where all our big money contracts are coming in from. So how, what's your marketing plan to those four groups? And listen very carefully, okay? The last question I would ask a realtor of the five questions is do you, do you accept an escalation clause? An escalation clause allows people to bid by, you know, 2,000 or 5,000 over the highest offer. And that kind of lets buyers cheat. They can bid up like that, right? Well, we don't allow escalation clauses. And, you know, realtors don't like that. Some don't like that. And buyers don't like that. But because we're forcing them to make their highest and best offer. We want highest and best offers. We want them, you know, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, whenever the deadline is, we want your highest and best offer. So what that does is we'll find that we'll have two or three offers in here and then one offer up here. So often we'll get $50,000 in one case, $150,000 over, I was gonna say the next highest bid, but there was no other bid. When we said highest and best offer, no escalation clause, they bid 150,000 over themselves and removed home inspections and removed appraisal contingencies. So you see, if you do highest and best, and on the same weekend, we had another person doing a hundred mil road for 175,000 over their own contract. So if they allow an escalation clause, and I know they do because we're buyer agents. And the first question we have is, do you accept escalation clauses? And they'll say, sure. And one agent told us it's only fair. It's only fair. And I got to tell you, that we kind of all, you know, got a good laugh out of it, but that's, that's fair to who? I mean, you're trying to be fair to the seller. You're trying, you know, we're sellers agents. We're paid to work for the seller. So highest and best offer returns. 
So if you, um, the first question could save you $20,000 on a commission, right? Preparing your home, clearly if you invest 7,000, you make back 50 or $60,000. So that's a huge profit on that. How you price to get people to bid and get it up, that's very important, right? How you market to people outside of your market area and bring them in, that's the pull marketing that we're doing. Pull them into your market, that's very powerful. And then the final is the escalation clauses, no escalation, highest and best offer. So that bidding goes up and goes on. So the last, and then the last thing you wanna ask them is what's your track record? And before I had anyone come to my house, I'd say, just send me your track record of similar size, age, price range, my, my area, my town. Um, I need to know what your track record is. Just send me your houses. What are your average days on market? And what are your, what is your percentage of assessment? So if, if all houses are selling at a percentage of their assessment, the higher you can get of that assessment, the more money you just made your clients, right? So that's a really good indicator. So let's just take a look. And, and again, I'm not, I'm not um, this does not go to bragging. This just goes to what you need to do to authenticate anybody that's coming to your house, whether they're here in Virginia or in North Carolina or Maryland or wherever. Right, you want to be, you want to authenticate the pricing. All right, so let me get to the next one here. So, so this is what that would look like. Okay, so these are houses that are selling up in the million dollar range, million three, million four, million five. Let's say I'm going to talk to a seller that's over a million dollars, and you say, okay, well, here's all your sales, and here's your days on market. Right, so it's obvious whatever strategy I'm talking about is is working fine. And again, let me just, let me, let me bring this back. This is not a Casey Sampson thing. This is a Casey Sampson team thing. Billy, Kelly, Morgan, Colby, Pat, Pam. Awesome at preparing these houses, getting them ready, working their tail off to get these contracts up. And, you know, Julie does just, and Michelle do just a magnificent job in the back room, you know, marketing these things. So this is a, this is a team effort, but look at the percentage of assessments here. So the average percentage of assessment in Vienna is 124%, right? So these are sellers that did it right. You know, they prepared their house. They priced it where it should be. You know, places like Ermintrude did not want to list here. They wanted to list it higher, but they, they got 100,000 over what we asked. All of them went that way. So these are the premiums that they got over list price, right? So we look, there's another page on the whole another page of them. So we look down here, again, we're still working on, you know, the max is 10 days, right? Well, not all houses are perfect, some take a little time. But look at the, again, the percentage of assessments and they're listening to us, okay? Now I had four, those 40 homes, um, the strategy was as we planned. We just, we went through with our strategy. On four homes, the sellers chose not to go with the strategy. And again, I'm not criticizing, but what I'm saying is, we all need to get, we all need to evolve. We need to get better. We need to get smarter every week. My dad always said, you're only as good as your next at bat, right? So we're only, we're only as good as, you know, learning lessons from the past. So I had four people that wanted to price it somewhere other than where we wanted to price it at. Okay. Um, maybe it was 25,000. Maybe they missed their threshold. Maybe they didn't want to paint. Maybe they didn't want to do what we asked them to do. But every time that we did that, and there's only one out of 10 would do that, we got skunked. We got 109% of assessment, 106, 116, 110. So we got less percentage of assessment. We got less premium. We sat on the market longer. So we sat on the market 26 days. And you know, when you get into this situation, you start talking about having to deal with home inspectors, right? So the premiums, for the people that kind of followed the strategy was 113. And the people that didn't follow the strategy was 12,000 negative and, you know, 131% of assessment versus 110% of assessment. So what this really tells me is that I'm not gonna be so easy on people this year because I know that when they wanna do it at a bigger price, I didn't put up enough fight to say no. No, I'm going to tell you, you know, you're either driving the bus in this market or you're going to get hit by the bus. So it's either one way or the other. So 
We want to be driving the bus. We don't want to get hit by the bus. So from now on, I'm not going to let anybody step out in front of the bus and just do it wrong. I mean, you know, you can work with another realtor if you want. I don't care, but I'll be more um, forceful because I want to win, right? I want these. I want 145s, 150s, 130s, 134s. I don't want, I don't want one tens, right? Because I'm telling you, it's, it's painful to watch this happen, to watch people not make money and people sell in these numbers when you know everybody else is selling higher numbers. So, you know, that's kind of what you want to do when you're talking with, with uh, the five questions you want to ask a realtor and what is your authentication? Let me have your track record so I can see whatever strategy you're going to do works. I need to see that it works. There's a lot of money at stake. This is business. This is not a friends, shouldn't be friends, family, uncles, cousins. I don't deal with, you know, I don't do business with friends. Um, this is just a business. So, um, you know, be very thoughtful if you're going to work with a realtor. If you're going to be a seller, do it soon. Do it quick before the inventory gets out. I've just shown that we're still 15% under. Um, our inventory is 15% down from a five-year average. So now is a great time to do it. My name is Casey Sampson. You've been listening to Coffee with Casey. You can reach me at 703-508-2535 or Casey at CaseySampson.com. Julie posts all of our podcasts like this on CaseySampson.com slash podcast. So we'll see you again next week. Need any help, give me a call or send me an email. If you just want to know what your house is worth, send a text to 703 703- 508-2535. I'd be happy to shoot you something back. Bye now.